Well, thank you very much, Minnesota. They were supposed to only have like 100 people. You know, we're supposed to have these tiny little crowds. You can't have any more than that. It's very heavily restricted. That's a lot of people showed up. I want to thank you. We'd love to have those rallies, but I guess you just can't do that. And you're not allowed to do that now, so we don't do that. But we do the little airport hops, and people like them, and a lot of people come back. But unfortunately, we had to hold off a lot of people in the back, which I feel badly about. In 78 days, we're going to be 78 days. We're going to win this state. We're going to take back the White House. And we're going to have an election that's all about the survival of our nation. This is a very important, in my opinion, I used to say 2016. And I must tell you, I think this is going to be the most important election in the history of our country. This is a very, very big deal going on. Joe Biden is the puppet of left-wing extremists trying to erase our borders, eliminate our police indoctrinate our children, vilify our heroes, take away our energy. You know all about that. Take away our energy, if you can believe it. No fossil fuel. Destroy our Second Amendment, attack the right to life, and replace American freedom with left-wing fascism. Left-wing. We're going left-wing all the way. Fascists. They are fascists. Some of them. Not all of them, but some of them. But they're getting closer and closer. We have to win this election. But the proud people of Minnesota will not let this happen. You will deliver a historic victory for our values, our citizens, and our treasured way of life. We'll save our cities and our suburbs from the future of crime and chaos, corruption, and economic collapse. That puppet Joe Biden would unleash on America. This is a puppet. He won't do it intentionally. He just says, well, whatever they want, because he has no clue he has no clue. I ended low-income housing being built in the suburbs and destroying people's American dream. You know that. If Biden and Harris get into power, they've pledged to raise your taxes by $4 trillion, which, put in very simple terms, mean many of you will have to pay double and triple the taxes that you're paying right now. This includes a tax of over $3,000 on a typical family of four. Biden-Harris also pledged to eliminate fracking, natural gas, oil, and coal production, forcing us to beg for energy from foreign suppliers. On my watch, America will proudly remain energy independent. First time, energy independent. We've made a lot of progress on energy. I want to thank your terrific representatives in Congress. Tom Emmer. Where's Tom? Tom, Tom, Tom. There he is. What a man. These are warriors. Jim Hagedorn. Pete Stauber. And this is a very important one, fellas. This is very important. Your next senator from Minnesota, fantastic man. I just see that he's even in the poll. Normally, that doesn't mean much, but that's a big step. And he's fantastic. Jason Lewis, he's going to be a fantastic <laughs> senator. That's big, Jason. That's ahead of schedule. And I hear we're doing very well in the poll, too. We win Minnesota. It is over. It is over, right? We win Minnesota. But our great Republican candidates for Congress, Michelle Fischbach, where's Michelle? Michelle. I hear so many great things about you. I have heard so many great things. Go out and do it. You're going to do it. We're going to be out there working with you. Tyler Kistner. Tyler. 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 Good luck, Tyler. This is a great group. And a man whose name I love, Lacey Johnson. Great job. I've been following you, Lacey. You're doing good. You're doing good. Thank you, Lacey, very much. We really have to get them, the warriors, all of them. All of them. We have to get them in. Because we have to stop this craziness that's going on. No law enforcement, no anything. They don't know what they're doing. They'll lose the country. 
You know, there was somebody said the other day, and I say it very strongly, sir, you're the only one between that and the greatness of the American dream. And there's truth to it. If we don't stop. We don't keep this position. We're going to win the House. I feel confident we're going to win the House. We're going to win the House. I'm very much involved in every single race. And with the Senate, we're working very hard. I think we're going to be in great shape in the Senate. And I think we're in great. Did you see that CNN, they raised us 10 points in one poll that took place over a short period of time? And it's still not good enough. It's still not good enough. You mean they're getting more honest? Because I'll tell you what, there's never been enthusiasm like we have. There's never been, including, right, Tom? Including in 2016, we've never had, we had more enthusiasm than anyone's seen maybe ever in a presidential campaign, and it pales in comparison to what's going on right now. It does. Even this, we wanted to restrict the crowd. We didn't tell anybody, and look at what happens. But look at voters for Trump. Look at bikers for Trump. They have highways with thousands of people. Thousands of people, you know, bikers going. I don't know if I'm driving along and I get passed by 2,000 bikers. I don't know what I'm going to do. And then they have, they set the Guinness Book. I hear the world record yesterday for boats. But no matter where you, in Florida, no matter where you go, a river, a lake, an ocean, the boats up there by the thousands on the weekend. The weekend is unbelievable. Minnesota Senate Majority Leader, Paul Gazelka. Paul, thank you, Paul. Good job, Paul. Are we doing good? We're doing good, right? I think we are, too. And Minnesota House Republican leader, another great one, Kurt Doubt. Kurt, thank you very much. Thank you, Kurt, very much. I'm having a lot of fun today because it's so windy, you can't see these teleprompters at all. So I'm sort of making it up as I go along, and that's OK. I've had to do that part. Now, these suckers are blowing like I'm saying, what the hell? Fortunately, I know these people. If I didn't know these people, you would have been in big trouble, I will tell you that. Another one I know very well, he's the single greatest ad buyer in the history of the world. And he also happens to make a very good product, his pillow. I use it. When I sleep well, I'm using his pillow. And these suckers are about to fall down, but that's okay, because I know him very well. Mike, Mike Lindell. Mike, thank you. And he's the chairman of our campaign. If I don't win Minnesota with you as the chairman of our campaign, I would say that would be uh, very bad for me, because if this guy can do anything. Thank you, Mike. It's an honor, and we appreciate it very much. Thank you. You do a great job. Thank you. And it's all made in Minnesota, right? All made in Minnesota. Thank you very much, Mike. Before the China virus invaded our shores, we built the greatest economy in history. There was nothing like it. We were beating everybody, including China. They had the worst year in 67 years. We were taking in billions and billions and billions of dollars in tariffs. Beautiful thing, tariffs, when used properly, especially when you're being taken advantage of by every nation in the world. We achieved record low unemployment for African American, Hispanic American, Asian American, young people, people with diplomas, people without diplomas, college students, crummy students, great students, horrible students, dumb people, liberal people, conservative people. Everybody was doing the best they've ever done. PhDs from MIT, PhDs from crummy colleges. Everybody was doing the greatest, the best they've ever done. Median household income soared to the highest level ever recorded. Numbers were unbelievable to open new opportunities for Minnesota farmers and factory workers. We replaced the disaster known as NAFTA with the brand new USMCA, which has been a big hit. Dairy exports to Canada, 
are now expected to surge by at least 50 percent. I know how good the deal is. Don't tell Canada I said this because they were not happy about it. They had, they had pickets. When they have pickets about a deal, that makes you feel good. But they've been taking advantage. You know, Canada, oh, Canada, wonderful song, right? Oh, Canada, nice, nice song. Only one problem. They took advantage of us like crazy with your dairy tariffs, 297 percent tariff on your dairy products, right? I learned that when I came up here. They had specialty milk, a little thing, specialty milk, and I met a farmer, and he said what had happened was specialty milk, and that got me over the edge, and I said, we got to change this, because you were taking time, you were taken advantage of by Canada very badly, and by Mexico, and by China, and by Japan, and by friends and foe, and in many cases, friends were worse than the foe. For years, you watched as politicians like Sleepy Joe Biden, who's been in office for 47 years, allowed foreign nations to crush Minnesota's mining. Look at your mining industry. It was crushed by dumping tons and tons of cheap iron and steel into our country. I saw what was happening. I did something about it. I did something about it. I will tell you, China wants me to lose so badly. They all do. They all do. And yet I get along with all of them. Although China, I don't speak to them. After the, uh, after the plague came in, you know, we made a great deal with China. They announced last week that China ordered the largest amount of corn in history and the largest amount of soybeans in history and big cattle purchases, one of the biggest that anybody has seen. And I said, see how smart they are? If they weren't smart, they would have stopped and we would have said, let's decouple. But by ordering so much, the farmers come to me, sir, we like this deal a lot. Please don't do anything irrational. How smart is China, right? The biggest corn order, think. They said the biggest corn order in history. So I have to say, uh, but I tell you, my view has changed a lot. We made a great deal with China, but my view has changed a lot. USMCA is the biggest deal ever made, and that one is working out great between Canada and Mexico. And remember this, Minnesota, under the last administration, the last administration, Minnesota Iron Range, was wiped out. Seven plants were idled and more than 2,000 workers were laid off. Obama and Biden closed it down. Do you remember that? The finest iron ore in the world, they say. I don't know. What do I know? To me, it all looks the same. But they say it's the finest iron ore in the world. That's good enough for me. And what did I do? Almost immediately after getting into office, I heard about this disaster, just like Keystone Pipeline, just like so much else, Jason. And you'll be working on that with me in in the halls of the beautiful halls of the Senate, and he's going to stay with us. He's not going to be one of those that gets elected. He's not going to be one of them that get elected, and then he walks into those gorgeous buildings when they had those big, beautiful dollar bills, and they built marble columns, and it's so beautiful and so rich. He's not going to say, darling, we finally arrived. Now we can go with the majority. He's going to do what's right. He's going to do what's right. I know Jason. You need Jason. Get Jason elected, please. But they closed it up. And I was here, and a worker, I was making speeches before you had to stand 200 feet away from everybody, before you had to stand like two football fields away. And a worker came up to me with a group of his friends, and they were all crying, and they were tough. They never cried before in their life, maybe when they were babies, but I doubt it. They were all crying. He said, sir, you gave us back our life. He said that. I had that just recently in Maine. They took away 5,000 square miles. Think of a square mile and then multiply it times 5,000. Took away 5,000 square miles. That was Obiden. That was Obiden, as I call him. Obiden. That was Obama and Biden. Short. I like that term, Obiden, because you save a lot of time. But that was... That was Obama and Biden in Maine, took away 5,000 square miles. You know what that is? That's like, I said, let me see what it looks like on a map. They basically took away the Atlantic Ocean from Maine. And Maine is the greatest in the world for lobster, 
and the greatest in the world just about for fishing. I said, why did he take this area? They didn't know, except that was the great fishing area. And I gave it back to them. I redid it. I took it off. I wiped it out. I gave an executive order that wiped it out immediately. And then we wiped out the tariffs that they were being charged by China and by, as you know, the uh, United Kingdom was charging tariffs. They were all charging tariffs to our fishermen, but we don't charge tariffs to them. So I made it, I made it fair. European Union was a disaster charging tariffs. They were charging big tariffs. We wouldn't. So here's what was happening. So Canada, they would sell the fish and lobster to Canada for nothing, for peanuts. And Canada would then sell it to China and also to the European Union. Because Canada had a deal where they didn't have to pay the tariffs. This was before my time. How this could have happened is incredible. So I said, listen, if you don't change your tariffs, I'm going to put tariffs in your car. It was amazing. They said, we'll change them immediately. Thank you very much. That took about two minutes. So I did a lot for Maine. We're going to see whether or not they remember, but I think Maine's going to remember. But I did similar for you when I opened up your great iron ore. And I put tariffs. I put tariffs on foreign steel. And the Iron Range came roaring back to life. You know that, right? Right? But these guys came up to me. Uh, you've given us back our life. I've never forgotten that. You've given us back our life. They didn't say thanks. They didn't say thanks for the job. They said that's what they've done all their life. And Obama just came in and closed it up. I don't say Biden because I don't think he knows what the hell's happening. I think if you mention, if you mention, you know, you shouldn't have done that to Minnesota. He'll say, where's Minnesota? I don't know anything. Else. I don't know what Minnesota is. Where is that, please? How many times, by the way, has he been up at a speech where he'll say the wrong, wrong state, right? He'll get up. It's great to be in the wonderful state of Ohio. Sir, sir, you're in Florida. That's the bad one, you know, when you see palm trees. It's wonderful to be in Ohio. Or I love being with the people from Iowa. Sir, you're in Idaho. And he always gets New Hampshire mixed up with Vermont. But all the time he does that. I haven't done it yet. If I do, I'm just leaving because there's no way you can save it, you know. There's no way you can save it. We recently issued a directive protecting workers on the Iron Range from unfair job killing regulation and frivolous litigation in addition to everything else. We started construction on the new Sulak right? Sula, big deal. That's been deteriorating for many years, just about gone, and we're redoing it now, rebuilding it. That's a big deal for your state and for others, so that the iron ore can quickly get to market. Sula. Our miners are back on the job, and wages have increased by as much as 50 percent, and they're doing great. Even during the China plague, they're doing great. And the China plague will fade, but we will not forget. But if Biden wins, the Iron Range will be shut down forever. You know that. He'll shut it down very early on, forever. I took a lot of heat by doing that. I took a lot of heat from the so-called environmentalists. I'm an environmentalist, too, in a big sense. We just signed something the other day. Cory Gardner, Steve Dane, senators, great senators. And we signed a bill that's going to really be something incredible from an environmental standpoint, the biggest we've ever signed, they say, other than Teddy Roosevelt. It goes back to Teddy Roosevelt. I said, why isn't it bigger? Because we also did something tremendous for Utah. You know that? Thousands and thousands of acres. We opened it up. I said, why isn't it bigger than Teddy Roosevelt? I want bigger. Otherwise, I'm not signing it. They said, sir, he did the Grand Canyon and a few other things. I said, all right. That's pretty big. Grand Canyon is big. Do we agree? Even for Mike Lindell, the Grand Canyon. Even Mike would admit the Grand Canyon's tough to beat, right? So anyway, but uh, we did. We signed it, and it's one of the biggest acts. They say the biggest thing environmentally done since Teddy Roosevelt. That's a long time ago. We achieved together, and what we're doing together is nothing short of an economic miracle, and now we're doing it again. We did it. We built the greatest economy in the history of the world, and now I have to do it again. 
You know what that is? That's right. That's God testing me. He said, you know, you did it once. And I said, did I do a great job, God? I'm the only one that could do it. He said, that you shouldn't say. Now we're going to have you do it again. I said, okay, I agree. You got me. But I did it once, and now I'm doing it again. And you see the kind of numbers that we're putting up. They're unbelievable. Best job numbers ever. Three months, more jobs in the last three months than ever before. Best retail sales in history. Best car sales. Did you see where the car sales are actually above what they were? Did you see the manufacturing? You remember, you're not going to have manufacturing back. Uh, you needed a magic wand for manufacturing. Well, we got the magic wand because the manufacturing numbers are through the roof. And your state last year had the best year it ever had, right? Best year it ever had. And now you're going to have something that's even better. So I just want to tell you, we're going to do it again. By the way, third quarter numbers come out. And interestingly, they will come out just before November 1st. And we're going to see how I did. But I think you're going to have a great third quarter. People are now starting to predict it, much to their chagrin, right? Much to their chagrin. They saw just like CNN said, he's up 10 points. They all said 10 points, 10 points. First of all, the first poll was rigged and wrong. It was a rigged poll. Just like they want to try and rig the election with all these mail-in ballots. Let's send out 62 million ballots. Let's send, well, you know, and some people say, gee, you shouldn't talk. I got to talk about it. Because absentee ballots are good. You send for the ballot, you're not going to be in your state, and you get it back, and you do something, and you send it back in, and it's a process. You have to work for it a little bit. But these ballots, they want to send them out in some states. They want to send them out, and they want to just have millions of ballots. They said, oh, we drop them in a lockbox. I just saw the great thing about Air Force One, there's no lack of television. You have televisions on the ceilings, in the closets, on the floors. No matter where you go, there's a television. You open the closet, there's a television. I say, no, too much Trump, I can't watch anymore. I try and get away, you put yourself in a closet. But they have a lot of stuff. And they showed this person getting on Fox. You know, Fox now puts on more Democrats just about than they do Republicans. They have certainly changed a lot. Fox has changed a lot. They're probably turning off right now as I speak, but I don't, see, I don't care. I tell the truth. It's ridiculous. One of the biggest differences between this year and four years ago is Fox. Fox is like from a different planet and too bad. And you know what's going to happen? If we don't win, they're going to go down the tubes along with every other media outlet. They'll all be bust. They'll all be gone. I can tell you that. Nobody's going to want to cover Sleepy Joe. We'll end up with one very boring socialist country that'll go to hell. But when you look at it, and when you look at what's happening, that's why we have to win this election. And if we don't win this election, every one of you, me, all of us, it'll never be the country. I don't think the country can ever come back to it. I used to use Venezuela a lot. You know, I don't know if I even really fully believed it, but I'd say Venezuela. We would indeed become, when I look at these maniacs in Portland, these anarchists in Portland, when I look at these people, that's what they want for the rest of the country. They want to defund their police. They want to terminate their police. You know something about that. You've had your little, you've had your little stance where they want to. Did they actually do the? They actually are terminating the police department, right? They are actually doing it. They're not even talking about it. They're terminating the police department. These people are crazy. And by the way, when I sent in the National Guard, that's when it all stopped. And I kept calling. I kept calling and saying, send in the National Guard, send in the National Guard. They should have done it a lot sooner, right? And that was a beautiful, I just said, I just stopped someplace else and I said, to me, it was a beautiful sight. They were riding all over, they felt full of vim and vigor. They thought nobody was going to stop them. The police department is very good, but they were told you can't do anything. They have to be able to do what they do very well. So they were told they couldn't do anything, and, and the city was ablaze. It was ablaze. I'll never forget the CNN reporter. He's standing there with his very nice shaved head. Right now, I wish I had a shaved head. It would be a good set of the wind. But you know what? He's standing there. Velcher, right? Ali Velcher. And he's standing there, 
Uh, things seem quite calm right now. And behind him, they have the entire city looks like it's burning down for blocks. He's standing there talking because the fake news doesn't report the truth. And they don't talk about how serious it is and how bad it is. But remember this, it's only a small part of our country. It's not a big part, very small. But they don't report the facts because they don't want to report those facts. Because those facts are very bad for Joe Biden and for the radical left. And they want them to win for whatever reason, I don't know. Because they'll all lose their networks, they'll all lose their wealth, everything will be gone. But they'll figure it out someday, but we're not going to let them have that chance. As much as in many ways they should not be rewarded, uh, they're going to be rewarded if I win because our country is only going up in one direction. So that's the way it is. <laughs> to fight the China virus, we've enacted the largest financial relief package in American history. Through the Paycheck Protection Program, we saved one million Minnesota jobs. We've also delivered nearly $5 billion in economic relief straight to Minnesota families. You know that, it kept it all going. And would like to do it again, except the Democrats, all they want is $1 trillion, $1 trillion. They're not interested in the people. They're not interested in the post office. It's all a ruse, it's all a con. They're only interested in getting a trillion dollars, you guys know that, getting a trillion dollars for states that are badly run blue states, very badly run by governors and mayors, like New York, Illinois, California, I won't name any more because, to be honest, he's going to Minnesota, I don't know. I don't like to be so personal, but you do have some issues, I will say that. Of all places, I would be very surprised. I was very surprised. Unlike Sleepy Joe Biden, our approach to the pandemic is based on science, not left-wing ideology. Slow Joe opposed the travel ban on China that I instituted. He remember he came out, oh, it's xenophobic. I said, what does that mean, Joe? Tell me, Joe, can you describe? Remember he came out, he called me all sorts of things, a racist and everything, and then he said I was right. I was early, way, way early. We would have lost hundreds of thousands of additional lives, and that's pretty much agreed by everybody. Then I put the ban on Europe coming in because they were ahead of us. And when I looked at Italy and I looked at France and Spain, I said, we got to put it on. And a lot of people didn't want that. They said we were right about that. And then we started getting into the manufacturing business with the ventilators and all of the equipment. And what we did is incredible. The, the governors were not prepared. We made a lot of governors look good by supplying massive amounts of equipment. Massive. Not one person in this country, we didn't have very many ventilators at all, way undersupplied. Not one person in this country that needed a ventilator didn't get the ventilator. So every single person that needed one got one, which is pretty amazing. We have a big country with a lot of diversity, a lot of different states. And now we're supplying, we're making thousands of ventilators a month and we're supplying them to the rest of the world because they're not equipped to make a ventilator. It's very complex, very expensive. We're making thousands a month. We have all we can use. Now Biden wants to lock all Americans in their basements for months on end, which would inflict permanent irreversible harm on our nation's children, families, health and economy. By contrast, my administration is following data-driven and science-based approaches that apply to common sense, mitigation, aggressively sheltering those at greatest risk, our seniors, we have to shelter them, and delivers effective medical treatments to save thousands and thousands of lives. And when you look at the rest of the world, you know, they were trying to say, oh, we weren't doing now, all of a sudden, a lot of the, the places that they were using to hold up they're having a big surge. They're having a, and I don't want that. I don't want that. But they were holding up names of countries and now they're saying, whoops. In fact, even New Zealand, you see what's going on in New Zealand. They beat it, they beat it. It was like front page, they beat it because they wanted to show me something. The problem is big surge in New Zealand. So, you know, it's, uh, it's terrible. We don't want that. But this is a, an invisible enemy that should have never been let to come to this country, to Europe or the rest of the world by China. Just remember it. Just remember it, they fake, that's right. The fatality rate for Americans over 70 has declined by 85% since April. We've learned, we know, we have some great things now too. 
Europe, by contrast, has experienced a 40% higher rate of excess mortality than the United States. Think about that. You don't hear those stories. They don't tell you that, Tom, do they? You don't hear that in Congress, right? We launched the largest mobilization of American goods since the World War II. Think of it, since World War II. This is the largest mobilization since World War II, creating the most advanced testing system in the world, producing thousands of ventilators and launching Operation Warp Speed to deliver and distribute a vaccine before the end of the year in record time. We're at a very, very close point to the vaccine and to therapeutics. And therapeutics, to me, are more important right now. You go into the hospital, whether it's a transfusion or whether it's a shot, and you feel better two days later or a day later or three days later, but that would be a great thing, and we're very close. We have great, great companies working on it because we will defeat the China virus. We're going to be stronger than we ever were. Next year is going to be record-setting numbers, and you see that when you look at the V. And the V is turning out to be true, you know. I was saying a V and everybody was saying a V is impossible, but the V is, it's beyond a V, it's a super V based on the numbers that we have now. So we'll see what happens. And we would like to give additional money to people. We would like to, it wasn't their fault that they got hit by China. But you know what, we want to give them additional money and we'll take care of, again, the post office has been a disaster for many, many decades. We want to strengthen the post office, make, make it good. It lost $78 billion over a relatively short number of years. $78 billion. I want to strengthen the post office. And we can do it. So that if you look, Amazon and all these companies that now do, it's a whole new business, they just drop a lot of it right into the post office. And we lose 2 and $3 every time we deliver a package. What's that all about? And he gets richer and they get richer. How smart is that? For every package they deliver, it's two and three dollars a package. So why aren't they raising the prices to Amazon and to these companies that are making all this money? Instead, we pay for it. And they always seem to open their distribution facilities right next to a post office. So they take a lot of the goods that they can't distribute because the post office is massive, much bigger than those companies. Believe it or not, you wouldn't think it, but much, much bigger. And they go to areas of Minnesota and other states that you can't reach, you'll never reach. And they just dump thousands of packages into the post office. And they say, good luck, here's your $2, here's your $1, here's your 52 cents. No, we got to do that. So that's my opinion. What do I know about delivery? What do I know? That's my opinion. That's a new business, but we have to, you know, we're being taken advantage of by all of those companies. And they should pay, not the people. My administration also understands that economic health is vital to public health. Over the past three months, we've gained 9 million jobs nationwide, which is a new record. Retail spending is fully recovered and is now at an all-time high. We have more retail spending now than we did before the plague came in from China. Auto production surged 28 percent. Joe Biden would crush this unprecedented economic recovery. During his 47 years in Washington, think of that, 47 years. Joe Biden, and you know it's really amazing, for 47 years he did nothing. Now he's telling everybody how he's going to make it wonderful, right? Doesn't work that way. And he's not exactly prime time now either, by the way. Joe Biden supported every globalist attack on the American worker. NAFTA, which was a disaster, TPP, which I didn't allow to happen. The horrible Korea deal, South China's entry into the World Trade Organization might have been the worst of them all. It created China. Now Biden is running on the most extreme far left agenda ever put forward by a major party. Biden's joint manifesto, we call it a manifesto with Bernie Sanders, crazy Bernie, would raise taxes and increase regulations at an unprecedented rate. He will kill the stock market. He will kill everything that we're talking about today. He'd also abolish immigration enforcement, abolish bail, abolish the suburbs, abolish effective policing, abolish American energy, and abolish the American way of life. Otherwise, he'd do quite a good job, I think. 
He raised his hand and pledged to give free health care to illegal aliens, okay? A lot of you people, when you get, when you have problems, you don't get free health care, but he wants to give it. He wants to give lawyers, lawyers, free legal assistance to people that come into our country illegally. And his vice presidential candidate, Biden, picked Kamala, Kamala Harris. She's another, she's a beauty who co-sponsored a $32 trillion socialist takeover of health care and our country, because our country would be ruined, destroyed. And the 33, think of this, you had 33 in health care and $93 trillion on the socialist Green New Deal, which doesn't work. It's like written by a child. It's written by a child, a foolish child. It's written by a foolish child. I have a very different vision for America's future, and you got to see it before the plague, but you're seeing it again right now, even more so. It starts with creating 10 million jobs in the next 10 months, and that's what's happening. Over the next four years, we will cut even more taxes substantially and regulations. That's why people are pouring into our country to open up factories. They're bringing them back to Minnesota and every place else. In Michigan, we have auto plants opening up left and right and expanding. They haven't seen that in 42 years. We will end our reliance on China. We will make our critical drugs and supplies right here in the United States. And you know, when you see the drug companies, they're very rich, very sophisticated. When you see them taking ads against Donald Trump, those ads are for one reason, because I'm bringing you drug prices way down. I instituted a favored nations law. So if Germany or any place anywhere in the world is getting their drugs for less, which they do a tiny fraction of what we pay, they have to meet those prices. So instead of saying he's got, somebody should have done this, Obama, Biden, Anybody should have done, other presidents should have done this. Our drug prices are many times higher than other countries, many, many times. In Canada, the price is half and better than that. And I gave Florida, Ron DeSantis, a great governor, gave him the right to buy his drugs directly from Canada. He's going to save half. So everyone, you know, right now you can't do that. I gave him and I gave another state, Colorado, the authority to go to, if they want, they could go buy prior to the favored nations kicking in. But the favored nations laws could reduce drugs by 50, 60, 70, even 80%. Think of that one. And I'm the only president in 51 years that had a year last year where drug prices came down, but that was peanut stuff compared to what I'm talking about. So when you see those ads, if you don't mind, and you see the drug companies hitting me, you'll say, Thank you, President Trump, for reducing drug prices. I guarantee you, if they were going up, they wouldn't be taking ads. Makes sense, I guess, right? I hope people understand that, because they are spending a lot of money. They don't like me. I did something that was unthinkable. Check out the words, favored nation. Check out the word rebate, because now I take the rebate for the people, and I take the rebate to reduce the prices. They took the rebate, went to a middleman, the middleman, I never heard the term middle woman, but I guess probably that too. But the middleman got all this money, was, I don't know who they are, nobody knows who they are, the middleman, you always hear it. They made more money than the drug companies, at least the drug companies made a product. But the middleman is not liking Donald Trump too much. I probably have a lot of friends that are middlemen, I don't even know it, they have beautiful homes. I say, I wonder where they made their money. They're very wealthy, but they're not so wealthy anymore. We are getting the rebates. We're keeping the money for our people. We will create tax credits for companies that bring jobs from China back to America, and we'll impose tariffs on companies that leave America to produce jobs overseas. One of the things in the USMCA that was very important, I don't want our companies going to Mexico, going to Canada anymore. I watched that. I was man of the year 11 years ago in Michigan. I don't know why, but they picked me. That was long before I thought in terms of running. Are we glad I ran? I think so. I think so. What do you think? Yes? I think so. But that was long before I thought about this, Mike. And I said, you know, I was in Michigan. Very nice. Man of the year. That was great. 
And I said, you know, they're taking your car companies, they're moving them all to Mexico. Anyway, 32% of our cars are made in Mexico. How crazy. But it's that way. That's the way it happened. But I said, the most important deal in the USMCA, I don't want anybody moving to Mexico, firing their people, moving there, making a car, selling it in for no tax. I don't want that anymore. Can't happen. And that's not going to happen. There is such a huge economic disincentive to do that. So we'll strip federal contracts from companies that outsource critical industries. We're going to strip it. With the help of Minnesota workers, we will be the premier medical and pharmaceutical manufacturer anywhere in the world. And you see it already. The drug companies are starting to give up. Now, I'll tell you, if for some reason the other side happens to have a victory on November 3rd, forget everything I said. It'll all be made in China Plus. It'll all be made in other countries like Vietnam and other places. And you can just forget everything I said because they're typical politicians, but radical left wing. They will go right back to it, but even more so. To protect our families and workers during the China pandemic, I sealed our border against illegal immigration and suspended the entry of foreign workers who threatened American jobs. And yet, if you're a farmer, a factory owner and you had people coming in from years we made it easier for those people to keep coming in i can't shut them off you'd have to close up your businesses joe biden on the other hand has pledged to allow virtually unlimited immigration during a global pandemic spreading the virus overwhelming our health care system and displacing millions of american job seekers the biden plan would institute catch and release i got rid of it along the entire southwest border. This is where you catch perhaps a murderer, perhaps a rapist. You catch somebody, you take their number, and you release them. You say, uh, please show up to court in three years. Nobody shows up. One percent show up. You know who the one percent are? The ones that aren't very smart. They're the ones that show up. They're the only ones that show up. So we built almost 300 miles of border wall, and we're adding 10 new miles each week. And if we didn't have that, we'd be in trouble because, sadly, and I think the, the president of Mexico is a friend of mine. He's a great guy, Lacey. He's a great guy like you. But I said to him, you know, we have to do this. And you have to, in the meantime, you have to give us a lot of troops along our border because we're paying you a lot of money with your cars and otherwise I'm going to have to tariff. And he said, no, 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 we will give you trips. We have 27,000 Mexican soldiers on our southern border. Nobody's coming through unless we want them to. We have to come in legally into our country on the southern border and elsewhere. You have to come in. We have 27,000 troops. You didn't even know that, Tom. 27,000. Furthermore, Joe Biden has pledged to increase refugee resettlement by not a bad number, 700 percent. You read that, right? That's in the manifesto. He would overwhelm Minnesota with refugees from terror hotspots, depleting public services, burdening schools, and straining city budgets. You already know about the hotspots, don't you? Huh? You know about it. You're having plenty of problems in Minnesota. But I'm going to be so politically correct, I'm not going to say a thing. But I know all about your hotspots. you got some hotspots. Very unfair to Minnesota, I will tell you that. And I'll tell you, if I don't win Minnesota, I'm never going to do it if I run for a third or fourth term, okay? I'll never be back if I run. I've given up. I almost won last time. One more speech, Mike. Why didn't you have... I almost won. I went to Michigan. I had a choice. I shouldn't tell you this, but we won Michigan. One more speech I would have won. It was so close. But if I don't win it this time, I'm not coming back. Never. Not for term three, four, five, or six. Under my administration, we've dramatically reduced refugee resettlement, and we've suspended refugee resettlement during the pandemic. You know that. We've totally suspended it. Nobody comes in. Lucky we have the wall. We're up to 300 miles almost. If we didn't have that wall, we would be inundated with people. And, you know, unfortunately, and we're helping them. We sent them a lot of ventilators and other equipment. But Mexico is being overrun with the pandemic, and we would really have a problem. We've completely reformed refugee policy. We've instituted rigorous national security checks. 
We've protected religious minorities, and we've shifted refugee admissions away from terror-afflicted nations like Syria and Somalia. And remember, you know, they say we don't have, we do have, and they understand that. They just don't want to say it. We have a major, we have a, a ban, you know that. We have a ban on people coming into our country illegally. We have a ban on countries because we want people to come into our country who love our country, who can love our country, who respect our country, and who are going to come in on merit, merit, merit. Which is the exact opposite of what was happening. Many of them hated our country, and they didn't come in on merit. All they do is complain. Do you know anybody like that? They just complain. Does anybody know anybody like that? Do you know anybody, one of your colleagues? You call, you call her a colleague? All she does is complain. I won't mention the name, because you'll never guess it. Complains, complains, complains. I don't like that. I don't like it. All she does is complain. Not good enough. Oh, really? Tell us about it. To protect our security, my administration instituted a travel ban on the world's most dangerous regions. Biden has pledged to immediately end this travel ban and allow unlimited migration from terror zones, including Syria, Somalia, Libya, Iran, and Yemen. Trouble, trouble. I also kept the promise I made to Minnesota four years ago I signed an executive order requiring state and local consent before any refugees are admitted. Biden would immediately shred that executive order, overriding local communities like yours. You know that. Did you know I signed that? You have to give approval now. A little different than the old days, isn't it? Huh? A little bit different. The old days was uh, a lot different. And I signed that approval. They have to go through a process now, and you have to approve it. Why should we send everybody up to Minnesota or any place else? In recent weeks, Democrat-controlled cities have shown that Democrats plan and what they plan for America. In Minneapolis, 700 buildings were burned, damaged, or destroyed, costing more than $1 billion. I just left incredible people. We we're on a runway like this. And I introduced them. Their businesses were burned down, gone. And they don't know what they're going to do, but we're going to try helping them to get them rebuilt. But five groups of people that were just incredible people. Successful, wonderful people. Their stores and businesses were burned down, destroyed. Dozens of business owners have announced they are considering moving hundreds of jobs out of Democrat-run Minneapolis. You know that. You know that. Criminals are terrorizing civilians in Chicago, Portland, and now New York City. This radical left mayor, de Blasio, has let our beautiful diamond. I loved it. I left it four years ago. I could see there were the seeds of problems. He was there. But I left it, and it was wonderful. Four years ago, I left it. And over the last year, and especially over the last six months, crime has gone up hundreds of percentage points, hundreds, 273 points, 368 points, numbers that you wouldn't believe. And we're talking about shootings, murders. You saw what happened this weekend. You saw that, Jason. Terrible. My city, I love that city. But it has, it has great potential. And we're going to do something. We're going to do something strong. They've just let it go to hell. And, and I don't know, is it because they're bad people or they have no common sense or they just don't know what they're doing? But our beautiful diamond of this country has been let go to hell. Top Democrats have demanded the defunding of police departments. Biden even referred to the police as the enemy. And that's what it is. He's not going to control. Look, he's not going to control the situation. He's dealing with, how about the congresswoman that I watched over the weekend, right? Saying, I have total control over Biden. He'll do anything I say. I have total control. What she's saying is, I have total control over this jerk. He'll do whatever the hell I want. That's putting it in more common language. But she said it just as mean as that. You know who I'm talking about, right? You saw that? What a horrible statement to make. And frankly, Kamala, nobody treated Joe Biden worse 
than Kamala. I mean, nobody, he was called a racist and just about everything else under the book. Then all of a sudden she said, he's such a fine man. Look, nobody treated him, including Pocahontas, nobody on the debate stage, nobody treated Joe Biden worse than Kamala Harris. And she's got some big issues. Congresswoman Ilhan Omar. I mean, I hear the booze. How the hell did she win the primary? How did she win the Lacey? What the hell happened, Lacey? Huh? It's Jason's fault. <laughs> How the hell did she win? This woman is crazy. She's a horrible woman who hates our country. She, yeah, mail-in vote. You're right, be right. We'll have to check that. Let's check the mail-in vote. Now, seriously, how does a woman who hates our country, who says nothing but bad things about our country and Israel and other of our allies, how does this woman win? Where are the people that would vote for her? Omar called the Minneapolis police a cancer and said they were rotten to the root. But Joe Biden did not condemn the comments. He didn't want to talk about it. He didn't disavow her endorsement. He displays it proudly on his website. This is what's going to be running the country. This is the biggest change between what happened between now and Crooked Hillary. Crooked Hillary is bad news, right? She still, remember she said, will you accept the results of the election? Will you accept the results of this election? And I sort of said, yeah, maybe, you know. But she didn't accept them, right? She, will you accept I remember that question. It was probably the toughest question I had out of all of them. But she hasn't been exactly a gracious loser. She's a loser, but not a gracious one. If Joe Biden and the radical Dems, if Joe Biden and the radical Dems take power, they will pass legislation gutting every single police department in America. That's going to happen. The Biden-Bernie manifesto calls for appointing far-left prosecutors, judges, and justices of the United States Supreme Court. Look, you know, we have a big thing with the court. The next president has a chance to do three, four, could even be five. You will change this country around. It will be irreversible. It will be irreversible. And they'll coddle criminals and punish law-abiding citizens, these judges will. They'll take away your guns while letting criminal gangs like MS-13 roam free. Your Second Amendment will, look, it was under siege, but not really, because they had never a chance. Right, fellas? They didn't have, they played, they played the game with, they had no chance. When I'm here, they have no chance. Your Second Amendment is cherished. You need your Second Amendment. They will either take it away or obliterate it into meaningless nothing. In Joe Biden's America, the protections of American citizenship will be stripped away and your community will be left at the mercy of the mob. I mean, I'm saying these things, but I mean them. When I look at what happened in Minneapolis, when you look at what's going on in, in different cities that are just unbelievable cities, Remember this, though, most of the country is very safe. In fact, crime stats outside of Chicago and New York, a couple of them, crime stats are, are record low. Our countries, even during the pandemic, we're doing well, but where they're run by the liberal, liberal Democrats, we're not doing well, and we have to get in. You know, they have to ask us. We had to be asked here. They have to ask us, unless we take a very severe action, which ideally you don't want to take. But every time we go in, we solve the problem, and we solve it very quickly. Seattle, look at what's going on with Seattle. I mean, this is a city. This is a real city. And they took over a large portion of that city. And they knew we were going in the following day. They knew it. So they sent their police in. And it was like nobody ever gave up so easily as those characters. But they're radical left anarchists. Whether you're registered as a Democrat, Independent, or Republican, I'm asking for the vote of every American who believes that police officers are not enemies, but heroes who keep us safe. I also want to send our special thanks. 
to the members of the Minnesota National Guard who did such an incredible job stopping the rioting, violence, mayhem in Minneapolis. They were great. They were great. I love it. I love that. It's uh, just a beautiful thing to It's a way it's supposed to work. They cause problems. You have to do it. And the sooner you do it, the easier it is to do. My administration has made clear to every mayor and governor in the country that the federal government is ready to send the National Guard and federal reinforcements. We will wipe out the problem within minutes. You saw it happening right here. You wouldn't have a city if we didn't demand that that take place. You wouldn't have a city. All you have to do is say the word. Every voter should ask themselves a simple question. Do you want the radical left policies of Chicago, Minneapolis, San Francisco imposed on the entire country? Look at Nancy Pelosi. San Francisco is going to hell, and she's in Congress saying what, what we should be doing. Look at the homeless problem in San Francisco. Look at what's happening in San Francisco. And then she's telling us about the post office. She has no clue. And I must tell you this, uh, does she love our country? Does she love our country? I don't think so, to be honest with you. What she's done is a disgrace to our country, what she's done, and Schumer crying Chuck. Crying Chuck, he cries whenever it's important to cry. Do you want the failed policies of Mayor Bill de Blasio? Or Mayor Lori Lightfoot, Chicago? Or Mayor Jacob Fry? brought to every city and town in this nation. If left-wing Democrats can't run a city, why on earth would you let them run your country? We have such, such incredibly run cities. Such incredibly run cities. The problems we have are the radical left. And now she wants $1 trillion, and she's holding it up using a phony excuse of the post office because she wants a $1 trillion to go, and you guys all know this, she wants $1 trillion to go to these badly run Democrat cities and states. That's what she wants. And she's using the post office. We want to fix the post office to make it better. It should have been fixed 30 years ago. Over the next four years, we're going to implement an aggressive strategy to fight violent crime. It's already been implemented. And we'll expand the surge of federal law enforcement into crime-plagued cities. And we can do that at will. We just have to hear from your governor. Call up. Just let us know we'll be there. We are ready, willing, and able. We will hire more tough, violent crime prosecutors. We will hire more police. We will dismantle violent left-wing extremist groups like Antifa. They don't even want to say the name Antifa. They don't even want to say the name. And we will pass new laws to prosecute drive-by shootings and an act of domestic terrorism. They will suffer gravely. We will fight for a nation in which every American child is safe on our streets, in which every American family is secure in their homes, and in which all of the American people are confident in our destiny. But to achieve this vision, we must finish the job and drain the Washington swamp once and for all. And get Jason in there, please. Jason Lewis, get him in. Jason, you got to win. Get Jason Lewis, Jason Lewis. Got to win, Jason. You're certainly against a weak opponent. You got to win. For years, left-wing politicians like Joe Biden talked about supporting American workers. Then they got elected and gave away your jobs, shipped away your factories, and they sold off your dreams, your, your beautiful, beautiful American dreams. They sold them off to the highest bidder. But under this administration, those days are over. Now you have a president who is fighting for you. Over the next four years, we will fully restore America's manufacturing independence. We will again rebuild the greatest economy in history. It's happening very fast. You're going to see it very soon and lift it to even more incredible heights than what we had last year. You had the greatest year in the history of your state last year. We will revitalize police departments and reclaim our cities for law-abiding Americans. We will protect religious liberty, defend the lives of our beautiful unborn children, appoint 
conservative judges uphold free speech on college campuses and safeguard the Second Amendment, the right to keep and bear arms. We will ensure American dominance in space and in military and pave the way to becoming the first nation to plant its flag on Mars. We're working on that. We're doing very well. By the way, when I took over NASA, it was dead. It was gone, right? It was gone. There was nothing. There was grass growing on the runways, grass through the crevices on the runway. It was terrible. And now it's the most vital space program anywhere in the world. Not only the jobs, but the importance of it and the psychology of it. And by the way, for military defense, and we created Space Force, think of that. We created another one of many, many things. First time in 78 years. Last one was the Air Force, right? Space Force, that's a big deal by itself. If a president did that, they would have achieved something. We did that and we did hundreds of other things. We will teach our children to love our country, to honor our history, and to respect our great American flag. We will never waver in defense of our families, our values, our faith, our jobs, our borders, our rights, or our freedoms. Together, we will unite citizens of every race, color, religion, and creed as one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. I want to thank you. You are incredible people. Minnesota, thank you very much. I'll be back. November 3rd, we have to win. God bless you. God bless the great state of Minnesota, and God bless America. Thank you all very much.